Okay, hi parents out there. Uh, this is John Yu here from Learning Link Out of the Box. And today we have a special guest and her name is Sha En. And let me share with you why I decided to bring Sha En uh, on board. And okay, uh, I met her last year and I am really uh, uh, energized uh, when I met her because of her positive energy. Yeah, which you will get to know her later on. And as a parent, I can sense that in my parents' group, there are many parents out there feeling the anxiety in the midst of this virus situation. Yeah. So um, I really need some help to share with parents uh, how to calm themselves down and reduce this anxiety, especially during this time. Yeah. So uh, Sharon, can you share with us like, more about yourself and what are, some, what are some of the simple tips that we parents can do to keep ourselves calm? Okay, sure, John. Hi, everybody. My name is Sha'en and I'm the founder of Happiness Scientists. Uh, we go around schools and work with parents and organizations in sharing the science of positive psychology or otherwise known as the science of happiness. Um, I am a mom as well. I have two kids. One is turning six this year and the other one is in P5, so turning 11 actually next week. So I'm really excited to be here today and thanks, John, for uh, inviting me. Um, I think, you know, during this period of time, everybody's very anxious, especially because, um, number one, the level of alert went up from yellow to orange, which made everybody respond in fear. And second of all, the virus is something unknown, right? So we don't know what we're dealing with. We are unsure about the you know, level of contagion. You know, we are worried. And especially as parents, I think the worry is even heightened because of our kids. We are not sure if they will get it. Um, when they go to school or even just being out in public. So yeah, it's a timely topic and I've got some slides that I want to share. So I'm just going to put it up. Okay, let me just put it on. Yeah, so I like to call it, you know, staying positive amidst COVID-19. <laughs> so maybe maybe I will address uh, what I suppose is what everyone is feeling that is fear and anxiety and just know that you know, fear or anxiety is a normal human response. Most of the time, fear appears because we perceive some threat to ourselves, to our loved ones, to our environment, to our way of life, to our stability. And when fear is triggered, there are two possible responses, right? So one is that we fight, we question, we, we wonder why people are not doing anything. So it's, it's like fighting, not physical fighting, but we question, that's fight. Or we flight, we get scared and we run away from it. So you probably have noticed that uh, the number of people in the malls has reduced, even people taking the MRT uh, now switch to taking Grab because they don't want to be in crowded places. So they're kind of flying uh, while trying to uh, get a handle on reality as much as possible. So one thing you must understand about fear is that while all of it feels very, um, disabling, it's like you feel your tension rising in your throat, you feel sweat coming out, you suddenly worry for no reason. It is there to protect us. So it's not unusual that we feel fear when we perceive this virus to be something that could threaten our family. But I guess the whole idea of having this talk today is how do we manage this fear? How can we get over this neurological response and still remain positive, right? So, Tip number one, what I would suggest is the first thing before you react or uh, worriedly give some instructions to your kids, like, hey, better wear your mask, better wash your hands. I see many parents doing that. <laughs> but the first thing maybe that you should do is pay attention to how you are feeling. By you, I mean you as the parent because children are watching us all the time. So if they are looking at us and they sense our anxiety without you saying anything, or even if you do say anything, they already know how to feel because they're looking at you. And children learn more from what you do than what you say. So you could say, uh, wear your mask, blah, 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 blah. And at the same time, you could also say, stay calm. And guess what they will learn? If your body and your whole mannerism is anxious, they're going to learn the anxiety, even if you ask them to stay calm. So it's really important as a parent to be the steady force through this Difficulty, right? And even if it's not the virus, even if they're having exams, even if they've made a mistake, whatever it is, who we are, uh, how we handle ourselves is a huge role model for our kids. So by paying attention to how you're feeling, what I mean is just recognize uh, when 
you're starting to feel anxious, or maybe you're getting angry. I've heard of people getting angry, um, right? And scolding China. Why is this virus coming from China, right? Or do you feel sad because it's like, it's so out of control. Suddenly there are so many thousand cases, um, or, right? So there are so many different kinds of reactions. So the first thing you need to do is to check in with yourself and ask yourself, well, how am I feeling? And tell the truth because only you know it, right? There's no point lying to yourself. <laughs> so for me, I think when the news first broke, of course I was worried because I didn't know what was happening. I wasn't sure how fast it would spread. And in order to try to understand a little bit more, I started reading the news. And you know, news surrounding the virus has been mostly negative. And so as I read the news from one article to another article to another article, um, I started to feel more and more stressed and nervous. And only at the end of maybe what felt like 15 articles, did I suddenly catch myself and recognize, oh, I'm getting myself stressed, right? So what we need to do actually most of the time is to just check in. Let's see, after reading one article, ask ourselves, so how do you feel about this? If we are feeling nervous, ask yourself, well, what can I do to find out a little bit more to quell this anxiety, right? So, if, but if you don't even know how you're feeling, then how do you know what steps to take? Great. Right? Yeah. So these are great tips. Uh, I have a question, which is like, for example, if you are alone and uh, when I try to keep myself calm and let's say I manage to do it, but what about among friends who are also feeling and anxious and uh, as well and they are also looking at the negative sides of the of the of what's going on. So, how do we remind ourselves that we have to keep calm uh, in the midst of being with friends who are very kanchong? Uh? Yeah, I think the, it's a great question, John. Thanks. I think it's important to acknowledge their feelings. You know, we by acknowledge it, it means that we don't dismiss. So if they say oh, I'm very kanchong. You shouldn't say like, Aya, this will all go away one la. Because you know, SARS also like that ma. Of course that's the truth, right? That with SARS, it took some months, but it did clear. But really what they're actually trying to express to you is that they're feeling something. The more we dismiss it, the more we dismiss our own feelings, doesn't mean it will go away. It still remains there. And that actually fuels more anxiety. So it could say something like, well, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're really worried about how your child's going to fare when it goes to school, right? And hey, I also share the same concern, you know, and then that's when you stop and think, but is this going to, is this going to be helpful to us at this moment in time, right? So it's not that we don't care about the emotion, we acknowledge that it's there, right? But we also recognize that there are other responses that we could have, right? I think there's someone, yeah, right? So yeah, so... Um, that's what I would say. So if you're in a group and they're all feeling anxious, just say, hey guys, it is really a, quite a worrying time, right? And you can share how you feel. So that gives permission as well for your friends to chime in and share how they feel, right? And it may not only be anxiety, they could be angry. Some of them could be feeling okay, right? I've heard of people like, it's okay, life goes on. We just take the, the normal precautions. We just avoid crowded places. And we move on. Some are a bit sian, like, huh, we can, cannot go more. Just only can go to outdoor spaces. So we acknowledge that, yeah, you know, it seems like the virus has disrupted our lives a little bit, right? Because it's true. Yeah. So that, that's, that's what I would say. Yeah. Great. Yeah. At the same time, uh, when we mentioned about uh, acknowledge, I think I, was, I also want to acknowledge our parents who is online with us right now mm -hmm. at 2 p.m. Yeah, so thanks, Sha. Yeah, Sha, uh, this is John. Yeah, uh, and if you have any question you have for Hi, our yeah. speaker, um, Sha Ern, you can just feel free to drop us a text in a chat box. All right? Or you can also raise your hand if you want to speak or just through p.m. is also fine. Yep. Great. Yeah, so that's tip number one. So pay attention to how you're feeling. And remember that all feelings and all emotions are okay. Right? There aren't one emotion that's better than the other. Okay, so second tip um, is focus on what you can control. So 
um, in the midst of all this uh, news and, and updates, you know, frequent updates, and for those of us who have signed up for the WhatsApp service, you notice they come in every day, maybe sometimes twice a day. So if that's not the kind of news that you want to receive, the first thing you can do is unsubscribe from it. Maybe in the beginning you wanted to know, but if the messages are causing you anxiety, maybe that's not something you want to know, right? Because it comes in and that's not in your control. But if you go to the internet and search it out yourself, that is within your control. So by, by getting clear on what is it you can control, what is it you can't, then you can have a better handle on how to act, right? So I have a couple of suggestions. So the first thing is, what is it you can control? So first, instead of um, only listening to how people feel, all the rumors that are being spread, maybe what you can do is to focus on the objective facts, right, of this situation. So objective facts are things like statistics, what is reported by Ministry of Health, what is updated by the, uh, the government updates. Focus on the facts because the facts will give you information that you need to know to better understand or answer all the missing questions that you might have. Of course, there are some things that aren't within your control, such as things that people don't know, right? So if the scientists haven't figured out, um, we, can't, we can't control that. So if we continue to focus on those things, then we will feel, ah, oh, everything is running away from me. There's so many things I don't know. But also understand that whatever you don't know is also what other people don't know. Right? The rest of the facts are already there. They've even gone so far as compare the statistics between SARS, H1N1, right? swine flu, the common flu in the US. So compare the facts and ask yourself key questions, right? which is, is this something that I need to really worry about right now? And if the answer is yes, then ask yourself, what is it I can do so that I don't have to worry as much? Right, so maybe it means that you have to remind your child a little bit more to wash their hands. You remind them to pack the mask into the bag, right? And remind them that if their friends in school who seem to be having flu symptoms, either stay away or remind them to go home and see a doctor, right? So these are things that we can control. And with ourselves, we can also be more mindful to wash our hands more frequently, right? Whatever it is. So things that you can control uh, will make you feel more calm and steady, right? Focusing on things that you can't control will make you feel helpless. So you choose which area you want to focus on, right? Um, the next thing is um, your own thoughts and your actions and behavior. So let's say you have a thought that is, and I, I don't think this is an irrational thought, <gasps> I'm going to get it, I'm going to get the virus, right? So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, how likely is this, right? Again, we go back to asking ourselves questions that bring us back to a little reality. Because fear and all these thoughts can take us down a rabbit hole, which may not even be real. <laughs> yeah, true. Right? So I think most of us fear that. That's why we put on masks, even when the government says, don't wear masks. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, right? yeah, so we have to ask ourselves, so how likely is it I'm going to get it? And that goes back to your habits. That goes back to where you're going to go. Right? That goes back to who are you hanging out with, right? So you have to assess the risk factor based on all these things. So maybe I can, I can give you an example. Yep. So um, I was supposed to go to Mumbai to give a talk um, at a conference last week. Oh. And I booked the tickets and they were expecting me and all that. And I had quite a few friends who were going as well to present. Mm. So... Um, when the virus started getting a little bit more rampant, mm -hmm. I had to make a decision. Should I go? Or should I not go? And the trick was that, or rather the, 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 the part that was a bit tricky was that my husband was supposed to go with me. So, right, I could get consumed by the anxiety and say, oh no, uh, what if, what if uh, I get quarantined, right? When I come back, oh no, what if the virus also is in India? Oh no, what if... One of the conference people, just like what happened in Grand Hyatt, passed to me, correct? And these are not irrational. These are real questions that we need to ask. So I have to ask myself, let's look at the facts, right? How many people are there going to be at that conference? What is the level of contact I'm going to have with these people? Can I keep myself safe and secure hygienically 
when I'm in a country that I'm not so familiar with? I have to ask myself hard questions, right? So there are some factors that are out of my control. I don't know who's coming. I don't know who these people are. All I can control is that I can wear a mask when I'm speaking. When people come near me, I can still wear the mask. That's about what I can control. Then I have to make an assessment, right? If two of us are going and really it does escalate, can we come home? Right? And if we can't, then what's going to happen to the kids? So this is where I think worry and anxiety is valid because there's a lot of unknown factors. All right? Yeah, so probably... If- yeah, probably. Um, I think as a sharing, it also start to, um, I and and okay. What what I experienced last week is, uh, mm. do you, do you re remember the time when, uh, there's a news that there are so many people actually storm NTUC and yeah. and 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 ransack the whole place. Yeah, and actually I was, I mean. I have friends there and they were saying that oh like it feels like it's the end of the world and people are taking away like stuff from the from the racks and clearing everything that they can see. Yeah. So while all these tips are really good and come in handy, what would be some of the first thought process that a person needs to have to keep them sane and not reacting with the with the crowd? Yeah, so I mean, you have to ask yourself, I mean, in, in, you have to ask yourself, do I really, is this a really serious situation? And of course, everybody defines seriousness differently, right? And you have to ask yourself, of the number of people queuing at all the NTUCs, what is the number versus the number who are not queuing? Right? We only see, we only pay attention to what we pay attention to. And if we are fearful, we will pay attention to what confirms what we think. That is, I need to panic. Other people are panicking, so I'm going to join them. Right? So that's why we go back to point number one. You have to pay attention to how you're feeling first. Right? And then this part comes in, ask the facts. Of so many people who are queuing there, how many people are not queuing? Right? You can ask yourself, why do they need toilet paper? Why do they need instant noodles? What is the fear underlying that? Maybe they are afraid that they will have to, they can't go out if things get worse. So they need to stockpile, right? So there, there is a real fear that they're experiencing. You cannot dismiss their fear. Yeah, but we can, con- we can manage it by asking ourselves, do we need to respond in that way? And of course, we can, if you really wanted to allay your concern, you can go and queue, which a lot of people did. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, to answer your question is, yeah, we, we, I mean, we have to keep on asking ourselves, is this the way that we choose to respond? Right? Is this what we want to do? Um, are other people's concerns valid? Then we check it out, right? So, even though <laughs> people logically will know that, oh, there's so much stockpile in, in the warehouse, um, even PM has to come up and say, like, don't worry, right? But worry is still there, right? So, we, yeah, so step one, pay attention, then acknowledge your feelings. So, once you acknowledge your feeling, there's a part in your brain called the amygdala, which is the emotional control center. Once you acknowledge it that, yeah, I'm actually feeling a bit nervous that, um, there'll be a lockdown and you can't get food out. It'll be like Wuhan. I don't want to be like Wuhan, right? Maybe this is the fear that they have. Acknowledge that you feel that way. It's only when you can acknowledge and calm down, then you can go on to step two, right? If you are too nervous, you can't think of facts. All these facts will not make sense to you. <laughs> True. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, and right now I am trying to also play it live on Facebook. Yeah, so the parents uh, who can't access the Zoom, probably they can't get through the app or okay. watch from their desktop. So I'm trying to make it accessible to them uh, via Facebook. Yeah, sure. So in the meantime, you can just continue. Yeah, and yep. if they have any questions that pop up, just, just shoot them at me. Yeah, yep. <laughs> sure. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, so again, point number two is focus on what you can control. And, you know, the things that you can't control, everybody else can't control that piece either. So let's shift our attention into, you know, something that is manageable for ourselves. Yeah. Okay. So next one is look for the light at the end of the tunnel. (laughs) 
I know that maybe for some of you may be thinking, huh, but this is a bit too optimistic, you know, because there's a real threat. Uh, WHO said this is an international health emergency. Is there a light? <laughs> so again, this is where um, people confuse the difference between optimism, being hopeful, and blind optimism. We're not saying here that we're going to ignore the facts or ignore the severity of the situation, but can we look right for the positives or what the question I have there on the screen is, well, what is something good that could happen from this, right? I know some people have joked and said that ever since the virus started, there have been no more demonstrations in Hong Kong, right? Mm. Something that was plaguing the news for months to no resolve. Suddenly, nobody wants to protest because they're afraid they'll get the virus, yep. right? Um, so more locally, in our own lives, with our family, we could ask ourselves this question, what is something good that could result from this? One thing I can think of is, it's a good time to really reinforce the message about personal hygiene with our own children. You know, how many times we have asked them to wash hands? <laughs> Most many of them times. Do yeah, and they don't do it, right? Uh, and you know that they're probably eating dirt from their shoe or <laughs> at some point. But how about this situation? Because they recognize that there is a real, uh, a real threat and they're scared. So they recognize now, oh yeah, hygiene will help to keep me safe. So maybe that's a good thing that the message is now being reinforced without us having to threaten them, without us having to lay down ultimatums, without us having to nag like crazy, right? Um, so that's one good thing that could happen. The, the second good thing is maybe because um, I, I know that a lot of flights have been cancelled, a lot of parents are not flying around as much, maybe, or parents working from home more often, maybe there's more time for the parent to actually spend with the child, right? Instead of focusing, oh, yeah, this is going to, this is, um, what do you call that? I can't do, I can't clinch this deal. Of course, those are fair concerns. But again, we can't focus, again, can't focus on the things that's out of our control. If our company says don't fly, and we fight them, we are spending a lot of energy trying to fight that decision, right? Why not shift our attention to looking for good stuff. Maybe now's the time for me to spend time with my children. I travel so often. Now I actually get to have dinner with them every night. What is something good that could come out from this incident, right? So this allows us to be hopeful, right? Just like SARS cleared after a few months, just like the H1N1 pandemic also cleared, um, we can be hopeful that it will clear with time. So again, it's not being blind. It's not being unrealistic. It's recognizing that there is that, that light. May not be right now, but how about let's focus on what's good that could come out of this at this moment, so that we can remain positive. Great. Yeah, and and as as I shared that, I can relate to that as well because just now I shared with you that um two of my three girls are not well. Yeah. So end up mm -hmm. I find that uh because of the fact that they are given like three three days of MC. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they have to stay at home to recover. And I realized mm -hmm. that because of this, I can spend more time with them going through their schoolwork. Yeah, helping them catch up with their work and also to get to know them better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know of some um, parents who, because they don't have to commute to work, they have spent, they're now spending time on their health, doing some exercise, going for walks in the part of time that they actually spend commuting down to work. So, so there are good things. The question is, can we, can we look for them? Can we see them? Do we give ourselves permission to be hopeful when everyone else is scared? Right? <laughs> I think it's a choice that we can make. I wouldn't say it's the easiest choice because it's very easy to give in to our fear. You know, but it, can, it is a choice that you can make. And you can, you can start with small steps. Right? So, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm grateful because uh, my daughter usually has so much activity staying back after school that I was lamenting to her, you know, Sherry, I hardly see you this year. <laughs> usually, I will see her at 2.30 after lunch. Now, I only see her at 4.30 and almost five days a week, you know. So, because of some cancellations, I've been able to see her a bit more. And that's that's kind of nice, mm. right? So, I cherish those moments, you know. Yeah. 
Okay, so point number three, right? Look for the light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. Okay, so number four. Just in case all the first three tips do not work <laughs> and you're still feeling kanjong <laughs> and worried and you still feel overwhelmed by all these things, um, I can understand, right? Again, I acknowledge whatever feelings you might be having and not everybody is able to, in the moment, uh, respond as positively as you would want to. Maybe upon hindsight, but not in the moment. So if you are caught up in the moment, Right? Let's say there are too many changes going around, and it's just too much and you're already feeling stressed from everything else. Then I want to share with you a very useful technique. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah, a useful technique that you can use to calm yourself down. And it's a technique that's used by the Navy SEALs in the US who are training for very rigorous and difficult, challenging situations. Right? And this is called the box breathing exercise. So basically what it is, is for you to just focus on your breath, right? And most of the time when we breathe, you know, how many seconds does it take? <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, two seconds in, two seconds out, right? Mm. And, we can't, and because of that, we're not actually getting enough oxygen into our brain. And without enough oxygen, our brain thinks we are stressed and thinks that we are anxious, right? So by introducing more oxygen through a longer breathing cycle, I'm going to demonstrate it in a minute. What happens is that your autonomic nervous system, I know it's a bit of a jargon, but that's exactly what's happening, is actually given more time to calm down, right? So that you can on the spot manage that overwhelm. And the beauty of it is that it just starts from our breath, right? And as long as all of us are living, we are breathing. <laughs> so you don't need any fancy gadget or whatever it is. So basically, and if you look at my screen and my mouse, it's called the box breathing because as you breathe in, you're going to breathe in for four seconds. And then this part here is where you, over here, is where you hold your breath for four seconds. And then you breathe out for four seconds. And then you hold your breath for four seconds. So the whole cycle is actually four, 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 right? So let me demonstrate it, okay? So you can close your eyes to do it or you can keep it open. For me, I'm going to keep it open so that you... I'm still having a conversation with you. So, um, first of all, find yourself a comfortable, quiet place. So, sit down, okay? And then, draw your attention to your breath. Okay, and then I'm gonna count, yeah? So, it's like, like something like this. So, breathe in, two, three, four, and hold your breath. Three, four, breathe out. Three, four, and hold. Three, four, one more time. Breathe in. Three, four, and hold. Three, four, breathe out. And hold. And one last time, breathe in. And hold, breathe out, and hold. Yeah. So you notice that now your in breath is eight seconds instead of two. So you're actually breathing in, right? And that allows, as I said earlier, more oxygen intake. And that holding part is really important because it tells you and it tells your brain. I don't have to react straight away to whatever I'm feeling. I can pause. I can hold it there. Right? And again, without, and then you hold. Again, right? If I'm feeling overwhelmed, I can take a breather. I can pause. So three cycles of it. You're the math person, right, John? 16 times three. <laughs> Less than a minute. And I don't know about you, but even just me reading that out, I feel calmer. Yeah, I can hear the tone is actually more, more calmer now. Yeah. And it's slower in pace. That's right. So yeah. this is something that we can do anytime. And all we need is our breath. And we just count silently in our head. Right? And it really helps to keep your eyes closed and be in a quiet space. Right? So uh, highly recommend that you practice it and try it. So that whenever you feel thoughts that are anxiety causing, or maybe you feel angry, 
right? Yeah, angry. Why is this happening at this time? You know, maybe you've just got a promotion and because of this, you can't travel. And you're angry that the time is so bad. Well, ask yourself, what can you do? Take those breaths, right? And then go back to tip number one. How are you feeling? Acknowledge your feelings. And focus on what you can control, right? Yeah. And then... Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just repeating myself. So sure. Yeah. This 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 reminds me of the saying that uh, to move fast, we have to slow down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes in the pace of our busy life, whether it's virus or not, uh, I've done so many parenting talks. I think one of the things that's common among almost all parents is that they're all very stressed. <laughs> whether it's stress over looking over their kids, whether it's stress from work stress of minding maybe grandparents as well, their parents, right? Some of us are sandwiched in the middle. Um, there's always stress all around, you know, and not all stress is bad. There's some good stress that's challenging. But if we keep if we get overwhelmed by st our stress more often and we don't know how to manage it, your kids are picking it up, number one, right? So they will say, Oh mommy and daddy are so stressed. I also must be stressed. It doesn't give them permission to relax either. You know, so all of this as a parent, I think it's really important to be the role model. Um, maybe you're sitting there thinking, yeah, so easier said than done. You're the expert, I'm not. <laughs> um, I can understand that as well. Uh, yep. But you know, how I am hasn't come just like that. I didn't used to be like this. Right? It comes with practice and a bit more awareness and consciousness that if we can get a hold of how we are feeling and our stress, we can be number one role models. Number two, we can teach our children these really helpful skills, right? And I mean, in the context of John's group, you know, there's a lot of stress and anxiety related to learning math. So what if we can teach our children how to manage their anxiety when they see a question they don't know how to do? If they can't, even if they knew how to do it, the anxiety will block it right out. They can't think, right? They're either fight or flight, remember? They can't think. So, um, all the things that I share with you, although it's you know, been geared towards the virus, are actually really good for us usual days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> plus, plus I, I also have this experience, uh, yes, uh, even for me as a dad, I always reminded myself to stay calm, to, to do my breathing exercise. Yeah, um, at the same time, I also do share uh, such techniques with uh, my, my parents in my Facebook group. Mm -hmm. the, well, well, many of them say that John, this is nice. Uh, yes, it's, it, it it may work for me. Uh, but I do hear this common excuse that, well, I love to do this, but I don't have the time, John. There's no time to do this at all. I need to do as much stuff um on my shoulder, and I got to rush and rush and rush for my kids. Yeah. So, how will you say to a parents like who who is finding that it's almost impossible to take out even a small bit of the time to to breathe slowly or to slow down yeah i think it's a great question and i, I get this question asked by the teachers that i work with as well um say you know we have curriculum time packed after that we've got marking after marking we have cca there's no time but again uh, maybe i would gently challenge you to think about what does no time mean right time comes when we make it a priority and that we value it so if we value um, our ability to manage our stress, then we would make time for it. But if we think that somehow we will learn how to manage it without practicing it, then um, when push comes to shove, only you will face the consequence yourself, right? So it's not a threat. It's just really asking yourself, how important is this to you? And, and it can be really important to you or it can be not important to you. If it's not important to you, then it's okay. You know? But if it is, then ask yourself, am I willing to begin with less than a minute, right? Just now that cycle was less than a minute, right? So you can even do it just before you go to bed to relax your senses. You can do it while you're having your morning coffee, right? It can be an active process. You don't have to sit down there and be a rock. <laughs> But the whole idea is to be able to train your breath and that the ability to be in control of your breath translates to your ability to handle stressful situations. You know? So I think time is what we make of it. 
right? <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, if you, if you really, really, really have no time, and I've not met a single person who has no time for a minute, <laughs> then I would go back to ask myself, how much does this really matter to me? And if you're not convinced that it's going to help you, maybe some of you are at that, that moment, like, you know, how is breathing going to help me? This is a real problem. Breathing feels something airy-fairy. I will highly suggest you go and read the research surrounding this topic of mindfulness. Happy to share some links. Um, mindfulness is a state of presence and awareness and non-judgmental uh, observation of your thoughts and your emotions, just being more objective. So there's a lot of huge body of research behind it. Also, if you're not convinced and that's probably the reason you're telling yourself, I don't even want to try, why not find out a little bit more? Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So those are the four tips that I have. Uh, I hope they've been useful for you. Uh, most importantly, I hope that you practice them. Um, let me know how it goes. Uh, just like anything else, the beginning is not the easiest part. Maybe in the beginning, you can't even sit still for a minute. I've heard of many people who struggle to manage that one minute. So maybe start with one cycle of 16 seconds, right? And then move on. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah, probably uh, just before we end off this sharing, I can also share a bit of my experience uh, and my journey of trying to keep my sanity. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I actually in invested into this uh, headband called Muse headband and it comes with an app. It's a headband that we wear like a headphone, like it's like a like a hairband, um, and then it actually helps us to track our brain waves. So mm. when the so when we wear it and the app is on and and uh, if there's a certain moment of calmness, you can hear a bird tweak or chip. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not tweak, chip, chip uh, from the app. Yeah, so it really helps. For my case, yeah. At the same time, I think some of us may not have the uh, time to get all this. Yeah, probably also remembering uh, for parents out there in our face our Facebook group, set aside your me time. Uh, be it just just uh, get a drink that you like, or probably a breather or a walk around the estate. Five minutes or ten minutes is actually a very good start yeah. to 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 have a peace of mind. Yeah, I think find a way to build it into your routine, right? So if you're a person who likes to get your morning coffee, you can do this process on the way to get your coffee. So one minute to walk to your coffee, right? To buy. Another minute to walk back. And you have that time. You don't have to sit still. I think many people confuse breathing with sitting still. It can be an active process. If you're the kind of person who takes public transport, instead of scrolling through your phone and checking your Facebook messages during that time, maybe just close your eyes for a minute, right? And focus on that. Maybe you're saying, oh, but now got the virus cannot deep breathing in public, in public transport. Then okay, when you get off your stop and you're walking towards your office building, you can do that as well, right? So there are ways in which you can, can blend it into your daily routine. Um, and if you are someone who exercises, yeah, maybe at the start of your exercise or the end of your exercise, build it in as well, right? So that it doesn't feel like you have to carve out extra time um, and makes it easier to start and easier for it to become a habit. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, for, for parents who have just uh, come on board and let me just share a bit on why we are doing this is because I think uh, there are many experts out there and I feel that there's so much for them to share and I hope that by sharing this can actually benefit not just in math but your 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 overall lifestyle. Yeah. So just before we end off, um is there anything else you want to share with us and what if the parents want to find out more about you? Where oh. can they find you? Sure, sure, John. I think thanks for asking. I think um if you have any questions feel free to email me. I didn't put my email there, but if you go to my website, happinessscientist.com and uh, or Facebook me on Happiness Scientist, I'd be happy to answer your questions. I think, John, you I can send you my email address, so if you want to send it out to everyone, I'm happy to do that as well. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your time. Um, I hope that all of you stay healthy and well during this period. <laughs> and uh, take care. 
All right. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for sharing. And actually, I learned so much. And now I learned that there's this uh, box technique for my breathing. Yes. <laughs> it provides a good structure for you to follow. <laughs> yep. Yes, I, I, will, I will follow your four steps. Okay, thanks. Okay, and thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, just stop recording. Okay, stop recording.